Can you oh, this show is about to begin. How do I know? Because I'm going to tell you that it starts now. I was on the trail of a child, brutally abducted from his village. What's happened, Foster? Where's my son? A trail that led to the heart of Union City. That's from the new game, so... Oh, I was about to say, that was pretty good. Yeah, they don't have any old commercials. Hey everybody, welcome back to Play Retro. This is Play Retro. I'm Scott Johnson, one of your hosts. And when I'm beneath the steel sky, I like to point and click my way out of all kinds of various problems. Uh, feels kind of scummy, to be honest. Get it? Scummy? Uh-huh. A significant uh-huh. portion of the world won't remember this game, but I do. And now you have no choice but to listen to what I have to say underneath this steel sky. And I'm down here too. And I'm your other host, Brian Dunaway. And my Outback Gap Daddy is dead. My smart ass robot is stuck on full snark. And I just survived my second helicopter crash in one lifetime. Guess it's time to explore this very British cyberpunk city dystopia ran by a giant eye so I can get home to the crater hole that is my home. Click, click, boom. Oh, look at you with the modern, well, 90s reference. Not modern at all, is yeah, it? Yeah, why not? We're doing 90s and might as well take back the music too, right? Yeah, let's stay in the doing 90s. Soundtrack. Yeah, let's stay play, in the 90s. Play, Talk boom. about 90s thing. Man, I used to love that song. So good. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't even think we it's that great now. I think it's probably I, okay, but I loved it at the time. That was great. I totally forgot about Limp Biscuit doing the Mission Impossible uh, theme song. Do you remember Limp Biscuit doing that Mission Impossible for two, uh, take right? A look around. Was it for two or was it one? With, I don't was remember. it? I think it was. I think it was two. Yeah, it was. It was MI two. MI two. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. It was. It's. I. I, ac- I accidentally. I was listening to some nineties music on uh, Spotify the other day, and it, it came up, and I'm like, I was jamming out too, and I'm like, wait, did I like this song? I thought I didn't care for Lip Biscuit. Wrong. Wrong. You I care did. for him. You do care for him. You want to send him a package. Uh, you want to let them know that you love them. You should. Yeah, Tell- I want to send him a, a picture of my chocolate starfish. Yeah, let, oh, don't do that. <laughs> but that's the name of the album, man. I know, but don't do it, for real. They don't want you to really do it unless, right. I don't know, maybe Fred Durst is into that. I have no idea. I don't know. Uh, but anyway. But I think it's funny yeah. because, oh, it's funny because I was using, I remember what blew my mind the most is I was listening, I was using the the built-in Spotify AI uh, DJ. I don't know if you've listened to this guy, if you have mm-hmm. Spotify or not, but they've mm-hmm. got like a DJ that'll... He'll come up and he'll say, up next, I'm going to play some music from blah, blah, blah. And he was like talking about uh, how this was uh, has become a modern classic. Mm. And then he was talking about Limp Bizkit. And I was like, <laughs> I haven't heard anybody talk about Limp Bizkit. Not, those, not in that okay. way. Yeah, I agree. Plus, those guys, right. the, I watched that documentary on uh, Woodstock 99. And those guys made things worse. Oh, they poured yeah. gas on that situation. They did not I, help. I forgot. You're right. I did watch that documentary. It wasn't just Limp Biscuit, but yeah, that was that was. Really they were the good. they were the impetus, though. They got like where they needed them to be normal the most. Those guys decided yes. to go full chaos, and it really effed things up that night. It was not a good time to do that. No, no, it was not, sir. No. Um, anyway, we're going to talk about beneath the steel sky, and you might say to yourself, "What is that?" Well, PC players of the of the '90s know. They know. They know what this oh, classic so those is. Amiga players too. Those European Amiga players. Thing. Yeah, you Amiga people, you know, you know what's up. Mm-hmm. It's also a free game right now on uh, GOG and Steam, so you can actually play that game with no problem these days, which is a nice change for yeah. something we're covering. We're going to talk about all that in a minute, but before we do, uh, I saw an interesting bit of research. I'm not going to get into all the details, and I talked a little bit about it on DTNS and then later on Core, but I thought it was interesting to bring up here because of the retro aspect to it. There's some research out this week showing that gamers spent 60% of their time, and there's some questions about what do they mean by gamers, what's the sample size, what's the age ranges. Like, There's a lot of questions right. about the data that I hope maybe they'll they'll spill more of the beans because it is interesting. Who, who would, who would, who would you, do you know the source on this? Like, yeah, it's this good. Uh, this- no, I can tell you the name real quick. It was a weird name. Um, I meant to put it in here and forgot. Hold on. It is. Here it is. It's okay. A company called Nuzu. I know. Okay. It sounds like a someone who no, makes fine. like this, they make GBA accessories is what it sounds like. But anyway, Newzu New put out this Zoo stuff. Gaming report. That's right. Sixty gotcha. percent okay. of playtime in 2023 went to six year old or older games, meaning games no. that were six years or more old. Uh, things like right. you know Fortnite and Minecraft and GTA Six and or Five rather. Um, 
that kind of stuff. And it was kind of across the board. Um, even though they were they were showing a 2.6 growth in the PC and console gaming market overall, overall playtime decreased as gamers focused more of their time on older titles. I thought that was sort of interesting. Top 10 games for each platform yes. are mainly established titles, older stuff. With the exception of Nintendo, the Switch games were a bit of both. Uh, Fortnite led the pack, but then they had, you know, Tears of the Kingdom and uh yeah other mario kart 8 and things that you know i guess that that is old but it's you know nintendo has their own brand of of, of weird uh when it comes yeah, to these yeah. stats and the part that they didn't really get into the part that i thought was interesting or i think is interesting is that i think a lot of this stuff is also indicative of people wanting to go back and play older stuff in general and i mean a lot older like the retro market has never been hotter than it is right now um right. if you if you got an old i don't know NES or Super NES and you put it on eBay, you're going to make more money now than you would have a year ago even. And yeah, uh yeah, I, I think tight. yeah, I think I think retro has a big part in where especially like where Gen Zs are. Like my son mm-hmm. would be just as happy to say, "You know what, dad, I'm just in the mood to play like Ocarina of Time." than he is to right. play some new $70 game he can't afford. You know what I mean? So Yeah, it's 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 interesting. No, it is it's a really good question cuz this makes me this makes my synapses go blah, blah 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 blah. What about this? And it's like, of course, there's more people playing older games. There's a bigger library of older games than there are modern games because the sure. the, the depth yeah. of it. And the, but then I'm also thinking, yeah, you know, maybe people are looking for something because I feel like just about every every first person I, I do feel like we're sitting right in the middle of a lot of sameness. Yeah. And oh, so it's sure. like um, except we've for cre- indie, we've crested indie. a little bit, right? The indie space definitely different, yeah. but but mainstream like AAA area market, we're all kind yeah. of up on this weird bubble, hanging out in the same the same sameness. No question. And it, and that may be true throughout history. I, I haven't really thought a lot about it, but it may be that always happens, and maybe that's the reason why we have like distinguished eras sure, of sure. stuff. But anyway, right. yeah. It, but I do think there is a like you said, there is like a a. a I don't want to say a backlash, but kind of like a like a a, a counterculture towards going back because I've talked to m- many more younger people who are going that retro route because I don't know what the simplicity of the games maybe not not having to deal with all the bullshit. Get of, in, get out. Of, you, know, you know, get in, get out. Sure. Plus these cool devices. Like there's never been a better time to buy a long lasting, battery yeah. operated, big screen, beautiful experience thing like an Amber Nick or something mm-hmm. that will run mm-hmm. all these games. And let's be honest, some of them are like, yeah. And plus these ROMs they shipped with, I don't have to. I don't have to. I won't know. Yeah. How can you? Like, how you can know. you compete with that? Right. Because right. it's, right. it's illegal. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's true. So right. it's, it's a little bit weird. Now you've got something that's, I wouldn't say this is related, but it is interesting. Um, you yes. found out this week that Google is getting rid of uh, Retro Dojo, which is something I didn't even know they right. owned that. I didn't know Google had anything to do with that. Oh, a- apologies. Maybe the title is misleading. So Retro Dodo is a place we occasionally go to for uh, retro history stuff. And it's a it's a great, they, they put out this great book and working on a new book. This is called A Handheld History. And so they, they're an online publisher of retro content as well as a physical uh, publisher. And they have a small staff and they really do, make, make some really great curated content. And unfortunately, Google has nothing really to do with owning them. What has happened, though, is they became very dependent upon their uh, income being from Google search results. Right. So they found early success through Google search results. And then along the way, as Google often does, they changed the game and Google is kind of slimy. I mean, they really are. They they talk about, you know, to the up to the creepy line or whatever it is. So, you know, Google's going to always push its way as far as it can to being a jerk. And Google has changed in the last 5 years where if you go look for something now, there's so much sponsored stuff. It's almost impossible to find real organic content. Almost all of it feels ad-driven because, you know, Google's trying to make more money. Right. And, you know, that's just, it's a for-profit business. And uh, but unfortunately, they act like they're, you know, altruistic and they're like they're the perfect place. And they, you know, they're they're bringing all the best curated content to you because it is the best content lies. Um, They take money just like everybody else. And uh, so (laughs) as a result, Retro Dodo has has had all their eggs in one basket. And they're really looking at, at downsizing what their staff, downsizing the amount of content they're pushing out. And just maybe even at risk of being killed off completely, uh, because they just don't have a way to make money. So they're they're looking at other places like Patreon and stuff. But you know that's that's just, oh, that's like starting from square one. It is start. We, it's we starting over a really long time. Yeah. 
I, yeah, I you know what? I, the only thing I would say to those guys, is I, I wish they would have diversified sooner. Um, yes. You never want to put all your eggs in one basket. And if all your eggs were in the search results ad market, you probably were setting yourself up for trouble because Google famously changes that algorithm all the time. And in this case, here's what they say exactly. Since September of 2023, Google has hidden our site from millions of retro gamers, reducing our organic traffic and revenue by 85% and causing our business to be on the edge of going under. And they even provide charts right. of when this changed. And it's it's kind of massive, like sudden, sudden drop. Yeah. Like, bam, you're dead. Yeah. And it was just last. I mean, it had this curve of growth driven yeah. driven by their efforts, right? Not Google. Their efforts mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. it. All that happens with the searches is the facilitate, you know, facilitates the growth. And then they changed their algorithm back in September. It's mm -hmm. like a, a like a truck hit a wall. Wham. Yeah. And a bunch of sites Wham. just went. Bah. And I don't even know. Like yep, it's yep. it's possible that this is wreckage Google didn't know they were creating. I don't know. Because I don't know who I, I don't yeah. I don't know why it benefits yeah. them to to hurt small sites. I don't know why that would hurt would help them. You know what I mean? It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It certainly does. It certainly devalues. It gives it. They're they're definitely Google is definitely cutting their nose off to spite their face because what they're doing is they're they're lessening the value for me. I'm recognizing it as well. I'm using Google less and less because I do recognize that the first three or four results are all sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. And then they've got their own, you know, side stuff with uh, Google that is basically scraping data from other valuable sites and putting it right there. And you're like, hey, we're just sampling it here. It's like, yeah, that's fine if you're a small player, but you're Google. You yep. shouldn't be borrowing anything from anybody. You've got <laughs> the pockets. You're going to be all right. Yeah. So. Yeah, Google is a little bit always been slimy like that, and people push back, and maybe some things will change, but most likely nothing will. And what will have to change is Retro Dodo will have to find a way uh, to to you know make some money elsewhere. And you just got to stay diversified, like Scott says. That's how we've survived as long as we have, and we're always on the lookout for you know what's what's coming next, yeah. what's over the ridge. I think they would do really well in uh, in Patreon, but it's going to take some time to build it where they need it. It's going to take time. And they just, yeah, you, you know, build a community. none of them are trying to get yeah. rich. They're all just trying to make, keep the site afloat and keep their jobs. And that's it. So, you know, if I uh, find the content compelling, they're I, great. They've always I been have, great. I their have, book they put out is super rad. Handheld history of comprehensive celebration. Book. Look at that. Brian's got it. He's got the copy right there. They got yeah. a new book. I'm going to get that. I'm going to, I'm going to subscribe their patron. They Patreon, they, they, and you know, if there's any way you can, you know, help eyes however however you can help retro dodo would be great because yep. i think it's a valuable resource and they do they do the work man mm -hmm. they do the real work so if we want to avoid stuff like the bullshit ai content uh, with very little value we want to make sure that we're supporting curated content yeah uh, go, go over there and get it uh, retro dodo.com that's where you want to go yeah Big shout out to them. And if you if you talk to any of them, say, mm -hmm. look, uh, Play Retro loves you guys, and uh, we'd love to send yeah. people your way. All right. Uh, let's get on to the matter at hand, which is this. Shall we play a game? Shall we? Well, yes. I think we Why shall. Not? Let's play Beneath the Steel Sky. Oh, that That's sky. A, a still sky. A you still said the. Sky. Don't get it wrong. I keep saying the. I'll say the till I'm dead. I've always done it, even when the game it's was fine. new. You, uh, yeah. I don't know why I do that, but the game is considered one of the great point and click classics of all time. And today, we're going to talk about this dystopic future set thing developed by Revolution mm -hmm. Software, released in '94. Big year for games. Uh, the game unfolds in a post apocalyptic world, specifically within the confines of a towering city known as Union City. As alluded to earlier, oh. ruled by a dictator regime and an all-seeing artificial intelligence. Yeah. Ripped from the headlines. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think it holds up. I only got to play, I don't know, two hours of this this week. I didn't have time yes. for much else. But this game's free on GOG. It's free on Steam. There's no reason not to grab it. Um, there's a mod scene for it. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. And the game works so, great. Is no issues, no problem. I was pointing, Brian, and I was clicking. All right, <laughs> with with no issues whatsoever. And yeah. if you want to relive those nineties, this is nineties as nineties can get. And yeah. if if you're a big fan of the Sierra, which you know 
it's, it's uh, Lucas kind of came along and kind of like took over a little bit with the point and click stuff. And Lucas arts was doing really good about this time. And here comes, uh, here comes these guys. And it's like, uh, let's, let's see if we can do something in between the two. Yeah. Uh, not so silly and maybe a little more serious, but still adultish. Still and hard. Exactly yeah. What they did revolution software. Yeah. It's yeah. very, it's very, uh, how do I put this? I'm trying to think who this appeals to. If like if you were like playing Monkey Island, the Monkey Island series, and you were like, "This is just a little too goofy for me. This is a little too yeah. tongue in cheek," and then someone says, a "Well, try three wood for me." Yeah, or they say, "Let's try some space quests," and you go, "Okay, cool." And then you play that, and you go, "Yeah, but this is also just kind of goofy." Like, I get the humor and I get why it's important, but can you give me something kind of hard edge, something a little bit more like, mm, you know, some of the yeah, meat you- to it. Here it is. Yeah, can you give me some good jokes like uh, naming our, our our primary character Robert Foster? Yep. Because Foster is Australian for beer. For beer. Because it all takes place in Australia. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Australia. There you go. By the way, there's a bum. You see the <laughs> bum? I butchered it. There's a little bum. Oh in this yeah, picture. look at this. You're you're already showing some of the most uh, uh, sexy content. Um, this is a cyberpunk uh, a, a, a setting. It's futuristic, dystopian, mm-hmm. cyberpunk, and uh, our character Robert Foster uh, has has one place where he has to go and get his cyber junk on, right? And yeah. so they they did have these uh, pixelated uh, posters on screen of of boobs and butts and uh, and muscles. Yeah, and boobs, butts, butts muscles, butts. whatever you need. Here's here's a, here's one now a scene where Noses. the guy's got an open chest where some surgery has clearly taken place or will. Uh, yeah, the yeah. game it doesn't shy away from those those themes, and it's very much like, hey, Blade Runner came, uh, how, how, let's go, let's have some Blade Runner fun, um, and that's what they did, and it's very good. I think the story is really great. I have not played the new game that is a you know by all accounts a full on Be- sequel to it, but I've heard okay yeah, things about beyond. it. Beyond, yeah, yeah, beyond uh, beyond a still sky came out uh, a few years back, and it is a continuation of robert foster i believe i have not played the new one i've only i've never played this one beneath a still sky until this past week um just never got to it and i i enjoyed it i played most of it it's a pretty short game you can probably get in and out of here in about if if you watch some walkthroughs you'll definitely get out in about three hours but it's about a six hour trip to beneath the still sky from watching this beautifully unique visual uh fair that that uh dave gibbons you know watchman guy yeah did the uh did the comic artwork he he brought he brought his his look uh to this and uh it starts from all the way from the beginning when they tell the opening story uh about everything is it, there's a comic book that was included with the original and it's online and you can get it for free and, and read it and it now, basically and that was actually dave gibbons doing the art in that right that was all dave gibbons i think yes that was dave gibbons art stuff he he did the comic and then they they pixelized it and uh, put it in your amiga and your dos uh originally on just some floppy disk and then eventually eventually on some, uh, some cd-roms um, and it's just what you would expect if you ever read any Watchmen and, and looked at those kind of uh, more adult themed uh, type comics. Yeah. And I dug it because it's steeped in it, and it is it is it is a lot of tongue in cheek stuff. And there is a robot to go along with you, so you've got your uh, Joey. There's a lot of Australian themes because this is where it takes place. At. It takes yeah. place in what's called the Gap. Which is really the outback of Australia. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's apparently been a nuclear war um, that is that has occurred, and uh, and there's Union City where you can go to get some protection, and mm-hmm. also uh, talk a little bit about uh, social hierarchies, which you encounter a lot uh, as as your character is uh, stole away back to Union City where you originally came from. Right, uh, which is your and, home. Yeah, it's your you home, man. Your out of there. Yeah, you gotta get the f out. It's your home. And- you better start yeah. now because you never know when you're gonna whatever. That guy, the other game, by the way, the newer game is on uh, Game Pass, so there's no reason to try it, not try that out. As oh well. yes, I think everywhere. I do want to try that out. I kind of want to see man. it, but let's let's talk about some audio because this thing here. I'll play some. This is funny because uh, the robot is featured and there is humor. I don't want to make it sound like this thing is humorless. It has its moments. Oh no, it is it is full of dumbass jokes is what I'll call it. Kinda yeah. And here's one. My anti-stress circuit took over. 
It seems security have mistaken me for a guy called Overman. Why'd you suppose that security guy got fried? Maybe we've got a guardian angel. How could anyone mistake me, Joey? Because you've got no personality, no distinctive characteristics. You are Mr. Potato Head. That's just a weird thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> it really, it really is. Now, remember, if you're if you're listening to us talk about this very British humor, mm. uh, because this world's developed, it Revolution uh, is is a, is a, was a British development company, so absolutely all their their humor was was baked in. But it's a little more, I won't say sophisticated, but. Uh, Mm, maybe a little more raw. Maybe I don't know what the word is. I, I don't there's know always either. An innocence to to the Lucas Arts kind of gags. They're they're all kind of a little bit innocent, a little bit goofy. Mm -hmm. And these are a little more hard edged kind yeah, of jokes. I agree a lot with of that. Balls jokes. I do. I, I agree. I yeah. think that it would benefit from more British accents. I think that helps the humor. And there are not many in here. Um, your main character, for example, is not. Everyone kind of sounds American, which is a little annoying to me. Um, but other than they that, they re-recorded. They re-recorded everything, Scott. They originally had... I, I would actually love to go back. Originally, they recorded everything with stage actors. Oh, wow. Um, which I would I would find very British from this time, in my opinion. Um, when I think of stage acting, I usually think of Shakespeare and I think of that kind of stuff. So Sure. It is, uh, but no, we went and went with the you know, more casual acting. And it's, it's good because it does kind of fit more because their major competitor at the time was LucasArts. Hmm. So they were trying to fit within that framework without being too much like lucas arts they make other stuff besides this the guys at uh, revolution oh absolutely they've made uh it started out with uh, uh over there with a game called lure of the temptress mm. um and it uses this game engine uh it is what was game engine called again i, I always have trouble because it's such a virtual theater it's such mm. a basic name yeah. uh, virtual theater this game engine they started out with uh with lure of the temptress in 1992 it it varies from the other game engines this time where instead of using like the verb actions like you would see in a lot of games you would just click on something and there would only be so many actionable things you could do and it would just do it but the most important part was how the non-player characters responded and reacted because they all had their own paths where they would go in and out of screens walking independently mm. instead of waiting around for you to come talk to them now mm -hmm. not all the characters do that but a lot of characters do which can be both fun and frustrating because if uh like he's talking right now on the screen that we're watching he's talking to one of the characters that is in three different locations because you need to be in each of those locations to interact with this guy so he's constantly going between those three locations and you'll have to sometimes wait for him mm -hmm. or you know you'll have to sometimes you need him not to be there and sometimes you need him to be there for certain uh, for certain prompts yeah um so in that way it was very revolutionary thinking uh to to have characters independently living their own lives made it feel alive um but then on the on the other point there's a lots of times where you're like you're in the wrong spot when you click on something and nothing happens yeah. or or the character tells you gather away and so you may have to click three or four times to to make your character move to a place place in the screen that will work it's not perfect it's a little frustrating yeah, i no, agree with perfect. that a little frustrating but hey it's old and you know when we were pointing and clicking back then we had a lot of forgiveness in our hearts for broken shit right <laughs> at least i did but, but you did ask that was just the first one but they go on to do broken sword uh and the broken sword series which is which is much beloved as well and yeah I and they ran that that ran that. for a long time let's see uh yep. broken sword went so the first one was 96 it was actually just after this uh the shadow of the templars and then mm -hmm. they went on to do a bunch of stuff let's see here we go oh they did golden glory the road to el dorado based on that movie wow yes uh, then they, in 2002, they got back to it, did Broken Sword, Shadow of the Templars, Sleeping Dragon, The Angel of Death, and Shadow of the Templars director's cut, all kind of in a row from 2002 to 2009. Uh, 2013 to 14, they did Broken Sword 5, The Serpent's Curse, and then went quiet for a long time until 2020, 2021, you got Beyond yeah. a Steel Sky, the direct sequel to this game. Um, they ran into yeah. a bit of trouble, uh, Revolution Studio Software did. Um, co-founders, Tony, uh, Werner, I think that's how you're saying it. Werner, Werner, and Charles, Werner, Werner, War, War, Werner, Werner, I'm going to say Werner, Tony Werner sure. and Charles Cecil. That's the two you hear the most about, even there's more people there. Um, that's the two you hear the most about. And when they 
hooked up with the publisher Virgin, uh, they made a contract where they had to do four more uh, games or four games in total after or including uh, Beyond Still Sky. Yeah. And so the the beyond the these the Broken Sword series is actually the thing they wanted to do the most, but they had to finish a beneath the still sky and all this to get there. Yeah. Uh, they made some. I, I I don't have the complete picture of that yet because I just found out today. Every week, me and Scott try to find out where the story is yeah. of the subject we're covering. And this week, I thought it was the story within the game itself or, you know, the unique way that 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 engine worked. But it actually ended up being more in the toner Tony Warner feel because he wrote a book and he's had a million interviews and you don't hear nearly as much about him. But he's he's chronicled the entire history of, of his time there at Revolution Software. And we're going to do a follow up. Uh, on this because I, I missed a big part of the story because nobody really has covered it that much. Most of the, the covering has been on the Charles Cecil, Dave Gibbons a- angle yeah, and not much about the actual company itself. Well, it's so, hard to um, avoid the Gibbons connection. It's it's a little like I've been playing these. Uh, I've been playing the Darksiders games again and I, you always forget how much Joe Mad, Joe Madeira had to do with that stuff because his art style is everywhere. And you forget yes. that that's a whole bunch of people you know, that aren't comic book artists that are all involved and just as important, maybe more important than the guy who's, you know, doing concept art uh, or, you know, mm-hmm. core ideas or whatever. It's easy to just say, well, it's a Dave Gibbons joint, obviously, because there's comics yes. and his, he came up with it. And these are these character designs. And and they, I think we sometimes lump too much credit on same thing. We do this with directors. We do this with like, yes, you know, I don't know, uh, showrunners. We give all the credit to who we think is the visionary. Right. We all go, we all like to go, well, who's the visionary? But sometimes that's not the whole story. Right, right. Sometimes you want the guy who's hidden or the guy who's the visionary that you don't hear about very much. I always kind of respect yes. that person because they don't, do they're not looking, they're not looking for that that bright light. You know, they're just sort of like, no, I just want to make cool shit. I want to work with good people and I don't need everyone's praise all the time. I think that's a that's yeah. an admirable and trait to go for. Yes, it is. And what, what do we feel about the humor? You have to either blame Charles Cecil or you have mm. to blame Tony Werner. Or <laughs> if you want to know what the mood and theme is, these two went back and forth over what they thought it should be. And so it, in the end, it ends up being this in-between spot that uh, is both d- disturbing. It's, it's, there's a lot of creepiness to this game that's just got this underlying creep that it's like, ooh, this guy is, this, this is how life is. In whatever it's, year it's, this is, it's, it's dystopic weird. as hell. Weird. Yeah, very dystopic. Yeah. The actual game artist, not Dave Gibbons, but the art in the game has Pixel a... Pixel artist. It has a stoner in detention writing on his desk kind of vibe. <laughs> and yes. I don't mean that in a bad way. I think it works for what it is, but it is not... How do I put this? Like, it's crusty to a... To a to not a not a fault, but to a to a win here. I like how crusty it yeah. is. Like it is so it is definitely nineties. You get an instant nineties vibe off yeah. this thing. Yeah. And I love a nineties high. I like <laughs> I do too. You gotta huff on your nineties high once in a while to get that get that old feeling yeah. back. You know? Yeah, you, you you got to. Yeah. It's not but bad. I, I I oh it's not bad at all. And I'm gonna go back and finish it. I finished um I probably about 75% done and I was kind of afraid to find out the total ending because I was afraid I might spoil it here on the show mm-hmm. um, because there are some spoilers. Uh, and let's just say my, probably my favorite parts of the game while playing it is my interactions with my, um, my robot, yeah. Joey. Yeah. Of course. Who turns into a, who eventually has a, um, has an identity crisis of his own which they explore in here, which is, which is great. But essentially you get to take this, uh, this, this computer board that has, you know, the personality of Joey. And it so much reminds me of like claptrap from mm, like a, yeah. a very similar kind of dystopic future borderlands kind of thing. Sure. And so it's gotta be inspired from this. If it's not, it's just, it runs parallel to it. Sure. Um, and you're, you're basically exploring this world looking for shell upgrades so you'll you'll transfer that uh essence to different shells that have different abilities uh through the game so you get a sense of progression uh without you know 
without points, right? right. So you get a sense of story progression and and like you're su- succeeding at things. Sure. And I, I really dug that a lot. So I got a question on technical standpoint. You know, it, it, were there any key differences between the Amiga version and the DOS version? Were any advantages one over the other? Anything like that? <laughs> so it. So I believe the DOS version must have come out first because I was reading some stuff on Moby Games. Moby yeah. Games is one of my favorite places, and I subscribe to them as well. I try to support Moby Games. Yeah. Um, it is uh, there's development and and so there's some facts and stuff and trivia. So the programmers who did the Amiga version uh, left some information in the main EXE file. Which would have been the CD file in this case. I believe it'll be the CD file. It could have been the floppy. Well, ninety four. Fl- ninety four. I assume it's CD. Just given the the, the games always had amazing uh, audio. I don't know. I could be wrong on that. Right. Uh, originally, it was released on floppy, and then they shortly thereafter included the CD version, which included dialogue voices, the voice acting. The floppy version, of course, didn't contain it. But anyway, the Amiga version, they left some information uh, in the, in there. And uh, you got some, you got some uh, beneath a uh, still sky uh, music you can play in the background, mm-hmm. possibly. And wow. I'll, I'll read what these guys, what these programmers, uh, so cheekily said. If you would like to hear it, yeah. Let me see if I can find a good version of this. Let's see, uh, beneath still sky. Now, I yeah. if you look at the YouTube video for the Scum VM version, which is the next one down, yeah. I included the Scum VM uh, soundtrack, which you can purchase separately, and we'll talk about that. In just a few minutes. Oh, that's the thing is, you can get. That's amazing. cool. I like that. All right, here that's you go. I, I think yeah. I found something. Let's see how this sounds. All right. Oh, this is all quiet. Oh my gosh, it's very. Whoever recorded this did not understand. Oh, I know. They why. don't understand how stuff works. Yeah, they. It's good enough. They're confused. Let me, oh, there we go. Well, that's perfect. That's okay, perfect. Go for it. All right. So here's what the Amiga programmer said in the EXE file. At the beginning, the programmers were happy and did rejoice at their task. <laughs> for the Amiga before them did shineth and was full of promise. But then they did look closer and did seeth the awful truth. Its floppies were tiny and sloweth. Uh, rareth was its hard drive. <laughs> and so small was its memory yeah. that did at first appear large. Mm. Querieth. Uh, also was a con, uh, configurations. Then they didith find findeth another Amiga, and this was slightly different from the first. Yeah. Then a third, and this was different again. Boy, programmers know about all of this, don't they? Yeah. All different, <laughs> but not really better. For all were pseudo backwards compatible. Oh. But eventually, it did come to pass that Still Sky was implemented on a one meg OS legal CBM Amiga, wow. and the programmers looked and saw that it was indeed a miracle. But they were not joyous and instead did weep for nobody knew just what had been done. Oh. So thank you for uh, chronicling that for us, uh, Amiga programmers. Yeah, that's dark. I love finding little Easter eggs like that. That's dark It business. is very dark. Uh, real quick here, the Amiga, now uh, 38 years old uh, in its uh, t- lifespan. I don't know if you knew this, but if you bought, an, Am- if you bought an Amiga 1000 in, let's see, I guess you get that that year. Many. I think you get it that year. But anyway, Amiga 1000 cost you at that mm-hmm. time, that year, $1,295. If you bought that today, $2,024, $3,670. People give nice. so much shit to Apple these days for being what they perceive yeah. as expensive. I think you guys have forgotten that we've always paid too much for top-end crap. Yeah. Um, yeah. And here's an example of that. Anyway, the monitor, if you wanted that by itself, that was another 850 or if you wanted to add that to it. So... That's Lord. in in today's dollars. Well, three hundred then eight fifty now. In today's dollars, right. three thousand six seventy plus eight fifty. That would set you up with an Amiga one thousand. Nice job. Nice job. And you know well what? Done. It was a pretty good gaming machine. Not as good as the Amiga five hundred, from what I understand from people. But it was it was good. Yeah. More expensive for gaming. Remember that as Amiga uh, CD thirty two. One day we're gonna have to do like, yes, what was good on there and what wasn't because it was a console essentially. And uh, right. no, no longer like a full blown computer. It was like a, a little thing with the ugliest controller I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I love the. Do I have that whole second? Do you have it? You have it handy because this thing here. Here I've got one for chat. Uh, Is it this thing? Let's see. <laughs> Close. Yeah. No, that's it. It's a little different. This 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 one Amiga CD is well, a little right. more wi- uh, yeah. spread out. I'll give you this. Yeah. One. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put this in our Discord. But. Oh, yeah. So, is it, yeah, the one you have for the CD is a little variation. The one I have is, uh, yeah, that's the, yeah. that. this is the A500, which was a more generalized. Uh, that one's not too bad. I mean, PC. that's no, that's not that different than a 
SNES controller or something, but right. the CD one, look how dumb that is. Look at that long ass thing with the stupid chunks down there. <laughs> we didn't know what was working just yet. We still had years to go. I'm really curious about it. Like I want to, I've never, <laughs> I never played one. I never got my hands on one, never touched one. Me either. So one day we're going to have to talk about what was good on there. Cause I'm sure there was something. Yeah. <laughs> there had to be something. I'm sure. Right? We should, maybe we should just talk about the entire, um, the, the beginning level of all the 32 things, right? Because mm. a lot of them were like, okay, it's time to go to disc and we're going to go 32. And we got, you know, the Sega had one, Nintendo was talking about having one, the Amiga had one. Maybe we could just kind of compile it into a, the, it it died. Mm -hmm. DOA. That's right. 32 bit. Hey, do you did you ever, uh, sorry, something I just noticed while I was watching King of the Hill the other day. I would like you to take a look yeah, at this yeah. picture I just sent you via Discord right. of Peggy Hill's uh, keyboard. What the f is going oh, yeah. on here? Yeah, she that that is that is the most numpad keyboard. <laughs> that is so many nums. It's so numpad. many everything. Look at even the, the other part. Look at the main keyboard. Like yeah. what is that double stacked? Like the hell? I mean, it's, it looks like it's supposed that to be is, an old iMac or something, but uh, it's that yeah, old it's, it's blue the old, and uh, what, yeah, what, the the uh, the, the ninety seven iMac, IMAX, right? Yeah, them. jelly iMacs. Yep. Yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah. And then on this wall behind him, that's also a calendar with like 120 days. Like, I don't know what's going on here. And, and what does she need an egg timer for? She's got a computer right there. And why does Bobby Hill have an ice cream? I have questions. Uh, there's a lot of questions. Oh, this up, you're this, right. This, uh, this, they also, her office is in the in the boiler room, like where they keep the water heater. Yes. So that's why all that yes. shit's around. I don't know why Bobby has a gray ice cream. And I also don't know why that timer's there. <laughs> but I do know that keyboard is like AI today with fingers. It's like, we just can't stop. Yeah. Here it You're all right. is. It's like how many, how many, how many keys are on a keyboard? I don't know, three hundred. Yeah, yep. that sounds right. It's funny though because I'm six hundred during this rewatch. I'm having a really good time with it, and uh, there are a lot of game references. Like Bobby plays a Game Boy all the time. It looks nothing like an actual he Game does. Boy, uh, which does. is pretty funny. Boy. And it's always making beeps that we're never in a game, but still, whatever. Yeah, uh, I enjoy yeah. that stuff. Anyway, I do too. Yeah, that's I a propane that. propane powered keyboards need more keys. That's what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of uh so i i i played this week i played beneath the still sky on the scum vm yeah. uh, because that's which that's how you get it because in 2003 um scum approached revolution mm -hmm. uh software and they said we would like to you know some some compatibility if you don't mind and they said we'll do you one better Here, here's the freaking game just uh you know just here's the whole thing here's all the audio stuff knock yourself out yeah. if you don't know scum vm is is a great uh piece of software that allows you to play a lot of the point and click games do you know what scum vm stands for scott stands for uh well it? vm is virtual machine but the uh right the scum part do you remember what i'm trying to yeah. remember uh scum stood for scripting hold on i know this so we used Scripting we, we computer we, uh, Remington right. umbrella monkey monkey R nailed it. So you are thinking right. It's like you do know that it's a bunch of you know uh, Sierra and Lucas Arts games or point and click. This this supports since one of the first ones they started doing. It it is actually called script re script you. <laughs> I'm going to start over. Script Seven. creation utility for Maniac Mansion. All oh, right, I knew that. I didn't. I, I didn't know the maniac mansion part. I did know scum saving because that was a real popular thing. It's like, oh, I can't believe you're playing on easy mode with your scum save. You used to when you would die in a game or get stuck, you're just screwed. But yeah, I scum save scum all the time. Save? I, I scum save all the time. I don't care. People can yeah. People can bite me in the butt. I'll play like what's the game That's I scum right. save all the time in? It's oh, my game. Baldur's Gate 3. Scum save all you want. It's your game. Do what you want. Yeah. It's your game. Yeah. Save often as you want. Matter of fact, I prefer it because nothing's more frustrating than, than especially in the King's Quest series. Sierra was uh, notorious for letting you paint yourself into a corner until you, you're, you're in a no-win situation. You have to like start over. So you don't want that to happen. Very frustrating. Yeah. Um. And you could, I don't think you could, uh, could you ever die in many of the Lucas games? I'm trying to remember. Anyway, I do know that it was possible to die in Beneath the Still Sky because I did it a couple of times. Um once because i wanted to see because i thought it would be funny yeah and it was funny and it was funny time. i'm sure it was hilarious um, yeah yeah you get a kill you get a nice little kill screen your character is laying there looking all dead it's 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 enjoyable but i played this on the scum vm which is how you'll play it if you get it from good old games or steam yeah um it comes with the 
a uh, floppy version with no dialogue or uh, no spoken dialogue, or it comes with the CD, which has all of it. Um, and that's the way I played it uh, through Steam, I think I did. Yeah, that's where I got yeah, mine. I played yeah. mine through Steam. Yeah, did the same. Now, here's here's the amazing part. So it's a really good interface. Everything works just like you would think it would work. But there is a, a soundtrack you can buy with it. If you've played this game, you know that the soundtrack is very repetitive. It's MIDI. It's very repetitive and can get totally annoying. Let me repeat myself right there. Um, <laughs> but there's a fan-made one from James Woodcock. Woodcock. Uh, and yep. Woodcock. Yeah. It's a soundtrack. <laughs> Super easy to install. Yeah. Matter of fact, so easy to install that I thought I was doing it wrong. Right. And kept insisting that I must not be doing it right. Sure. But... <laughs> For it's free if you, but as a suggested donation, two dollars and ninety nine cents. And I'm sorry, two dollars and ninety nine pounds. Is that right? How do you say it? Pounds over two, there. Two pounds and ninety nine pence. Whatever's. Yeah. Pence. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, equals about five bucks U.S. Yeah. So, I I gave him the five bucks. I downloaded the soundtrack, and you're like, Brian, why don't you put, spend five dollars in the free game? And it's like, well, the game wasn't. You know, this guy's got to make his money too now. James Woodcock needs his woodcock money yeah and so i'm like yeah and he, he sent it to me he sent it me in flack and uh in the ogg vorbis the og vorbis format yeah i just drug those into the main root directory mm -hmm. started the scum vm up and it boop just like that just started playing it. that music and it was so much better after playing it yeah with the default music that's the way to do it so i did the good. same and that is absolutely 100 percent the way to do it now if you just fine yeah. with reading the text do and don't give a crap about the audio you're fine whatever you just get the free version and play but i think that stuff enhances it a lot uh, yeah it, it yeah. really gives you the mood and it's good because scum we talk about this about a lot of cd games that are on consoles and stuff uh the sound mixing is, is can be questionable uh during the 90s where you have really mm. bad sound mixing and luckily scum vm has built into it oh, f5 i was constantly going that f5 for saving and adjusting uh music level and sound effects and suggesting all that stuff so that it's are they nice still pretty active in keeping that up and updating it and doing forks and all that stuff of the scum vm as stuff? far as i've seen it look my was my i downloaded the latest because i was just making sure it all worked on the most latest one it worked fine hmm. the one this comes with steam i think is a little bit older version yeah but you can still access it if you don't want to install scum as a separate thing if you do get this free version just add it to your library on steam yeah uh, you can go into your your common files under steam and you can actually launch scum vm from there it installs it for you uh and you can add more games to your library from from there if you'd like is that um and sorry that is that 1080p uh, or 1080 snowboarding playing on your uh on your uh, yeah that is 1080 very good yes i i love to turn this is like my favorite uh so this is 1080 on the gamecube yeah uh, oh, a, GameCube a, a game. That was game. called uh, Avalanche something. Uh, yeah, I believe you're right. I think it's Avalanche, but it is a 1080, 1080, 1080 skiing Avalanche or something. Yeah, whatever it was. Right, right. Yeah. But it's got all that great 90s music. Mm -hmm. And I, I lead this thing on loop. Like if we weren't talking right now, I'd have my I'd have my uh, I'd have my music turned up and I'd be listening to this because it's so much fun to hear all these big this great music and turn around and seeing these guys just hitting the hitting the snow. It's yeah, good. yeah, I I loved it. Uh, the, the both those games, they used to. I just escaped into those mm -hmm. games. Loved them so much. Anyway, just had to ask. So, total those, side actually. note. Oh yeah. Uh, they made another game in '92 that's worth mentioning called Lure of the Temptress, point and click adventure. It came out in '92, like we said. Mm -hmm. Same people, and this is really their big debut. A lot of people think this is the true uh, classic. I talked to a couple of li our listeners during the week. They're like, "Well, that's the game you should talk about." Right. I'm like, I right. don't think anybody knows what Lure of the Temptress is. For good or for bad, I don't. <laughs> I, didn't. I had no. I never even heard of this shit, so this was new to me. Right, but it looks good. I mean, it looks like fun. It'll be worth checking out yeah. if you're really into these. You know, you know, we talk about the two biggies, Sierra and Lucas, and uh, Revolution. There was a couple of people vying for third place. Mm -hmm. And as I did my research this week, I really feel like Revolution Software was doing some uh, some pretty big work working towards being third in that market and uh, I, I definitely want to go back and play lure of the interest and i'll get a chance to talk a little bit about uh talk more about tony warren or since i have an opportunity to buy the book and read it i've only read it an excerpt so far uh and he's also working on a uh game called wormhole dungeon oh 
Okay. Um, and it is it is an early is still in development right now, and I don't think he's found a place for the project. I don't think he's kickstarted or anything like that. But it's supposed to be launched in 2024. But this guy's done been doing the the podcast circuit, you know, talking to people, doing interviews, talking about his time there, and talking about the missteps that led to the the eventual uh, departure from Revolution Software, mm-hmm. and uh, how games themselves were, how game studios and records music industry was working at mm-hmm. the time because yeah. that you know it's virgin all sure. that stuff kind of blurs and cross crosses places so, oh yeah what well, um, looked like good read. virgin interactive what a what a story that is on its own there's a lot of weird shit went yeah. down with that so this is called mm-hmm. wormhole dungeon i'm looking at their website they don't have a date but it looks like this oh it says coming in 2024 um yeah garen uh, style arcade adventure it says a big demo coming there is a kickstarter early access thing Mm-hmm. Uh, they have vague plans for Dreamcast Amiga ports. That's a weird. That's a Isn't weird that range. Amazing. There's still. I I love the fact that that people are are. There's enough. Oh, there's enough things out there. Development tools that you can develop games for Dreamcast and Amiga and Nintendo NES and all these other systems that you can make games for and put them on physical media and ship them to people. Yeah, it's looks like fun. The Atari this, Age stuff is great. And this is him doing the whole thing. Yeah. He made. Uh, he designed it, coded it, all of it. He says, I absolutely guarantee there was no generative AI used in the making of this game. <laughs> also says no I in-app like, purchases. Uh, I like that. That's cool. Yeah, he's old school, man. He's he's He loves programming. And <laughs> I, I had kind of learned that as look I at was a, reading. Look at what else he says. This is great. Things. So he says no generative AI. Then he says no in-app purchases. Fine. Then he says free from the tyranny of DLC and dark patterns. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. This, this guy's man got is opinions. old school. He's like, yeah, he's got opinions, and I love it. I, I like I it, too. It. That's awesome. Fun. I'm ready to play. I'll play that game. Hell yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. Go yeah. to, uh, let's see, it's on itch.io. Wormhole Dungeon. Just search for it. Google it, and you'll find it. Or yeah. duck, duck, go it if you don't like Google today. Like, we're feeling a little riot. Yes. Rat, yeah, like, like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna, I'm not going to Google ever again. Okay, I will, but. I probably won't. I, don't, I haven't used Google in years. For the next. Next twenty four hours, I won't. I won't Google I until I get. I, I haven't used them in years, and I'm not telling you that just to say it. I, that's for real. Oh, and, I know. and I haven't even made like a stink about it. It's just I just went. Oh, I kind of like DuckDuckGo. I'm going to use this for a while. Then it's stuck. I just haven't used anything else. Yeah. So uh, I don't. I don't I, feel like I I'm missing switching. anything. I I don't use Google unless I need a specific. Um, I, it usually has to do with like getting something specific for programming or mm-hmm. something like that. Like if I'm having a specific era, mm. era, era, like I'm having a, like some, I'm trying to track down through logs and stuff. Mm. I, I still haven't found anything better than Google for that, but I'm sure I could, if I put the work in, Dunda goes a great place to go though. Yeah. And that, it, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit apprehensive about things like the brave browser. Mm. I use it. I like it. Um, duck, duck, go. I use it. I like it, but I'm always a little apprehensive when they go, or we don't do anything. We're do data. We're perfect. We're pristine. And I'm like, yeah, you don't trust it. Do you? <laughs> I still don't trust it. I'm like, at least with Google, I know they're still in my shit. I mean, I like, no Google's listening. I'm oh like, yeah. yeah they're right now. Listening. They're listening. Sure. Here's the thing though. Right. I don't, I like, uh, so I use Firefox as my browser duck, duck, go yeah. for my, for my, uh, search engine. Uh, mm-hmm. what? Uh, what's the other thing? Uh, and your Steam, uh, re- re- emu, re- uh, retro <laughs> emu for your Steam Deck. Yeah, of course, my Steam Deck. <laughs> Which is it? No, is emu deck, emu deck, emu God, deck, like, emu, not emu, emu, emu deck. No, that's it. Yeah, emu deck. No, that's emu retro. Shit. Shit. Emu <laughs> deck. What is that called? <laughs> Hold on, emu deck. Yeah, that is it. Yeah, it doesn't sound it. right. Yeah, it doesn't it, sound right. It doesn't at all. sound right. That doesn't. No, no it doesn't. It. Uh, it. Those guys are great. Emu Deck does stuff uh, for your your, sw- your your swing deck, your Steam Deck, your swing deck. <laughs> they also they also have stuff the, for the in, new uh, what do you call it from uh, what's their names the I or the Rock uh, Rog whatever it is. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. Rog Ally. Rog Ally. You know what? Me and me and 
if if you're ever listening to this podcast, yeah, we we have we have time slotted this podcast <laughs> near the end of the day. Yeah. So me and Scott are always <laughs> brain dead by the time we gear. We do all this great research and we have all this great energy, but then when you start trying to pull names after how many podcasts you had today? A uh, lot. Today was a lot. Things. Yeah, it's a lot today. Yeah, a day my brain's kind of mush at this point, dead. but it's okay. That's why we depend on our notes. Yeah, that's why right. our notes are here. We've been keeping meticulous ones all week so that we won't confuse any of you. All right, go play the games. They're fantastic. Beneath the Steel Sky and the new game that's out now. I am actually curious to play it. I might actually pull the trigger because I've been I've owned it on Steam forever. It's Steam Deck ready. I should just play it. Why don't I play it? Yeah. So I think I'm going to do that. Uh, now, this. Destroy it. <laughs> hey, guys, guess what? <laughs> It's time for us what? to play Guess My Game. And it's a little game we play where Brian and I play some old audio from an old game, and we try to guess what it is. Uh, we both know what year and what platform. And we also have five choices each. Uh, mine is also, every single game I mention here is all in the same year to try to confuse you. Okay? Ooh. Yeah. I didn't even go out of the year here. Uh, so Brian, I do the I'm, same thing, by the way. I, st I stay in the same year and the same platform just in case you have some familiarity with one of the one of the games. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um I yeah. will mix them sometimes but today is definitely like that. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my audio. The year is 1997 and the platform is the Windows/PC slash platform. Okay? Ooh. This was a PC game and it was 97. Here is your audio right here. What began as a conflict over the transfer of consciousness from flesh to machines escalated into a war which has decimated a million worlds. Sounds like the game we play today. But with a lot of wars. Got a lot of wars in it. All right, here are your choices. While I play this in the background. It's all just battle music here. All right? Let's see. Let me another shit here. Yeah, just a lot of that kind of stuff. Here are your choices, Brian. A, mm -mm. Tobal 2, T O B A L 2. Okay, Tobal 2. Tobley, Tobley. B, Einhander. C, Colony Wars. <laughs> or D, Total Annihilation. Again, your options are Tobal 2, A, Einhander. B, Einhander. C, Colony Wars. And D, Total Annihilation. Which do you think it is? Well, I'm gonna love. I'm gonna. I'm gonna rule out Tobal too because I don't know what the hell that is. Oh, all right. Um, I know what that is. But yeah, I'm gonna it. rule out B Einhanda because I feel like with a name like that, there should be a German guy speaking right now in my ears. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm narrowing it down to C D. Colony Wars or a total annihilation. I think I might have heard him say he's he's. I'm not sure if I imagine it, but I've heard Colony and uh, Annihilation somewhere in wars, and so boy. Now it's all just getting confusing. Well, here I'll play. I, I'll play I, that guy again. What began as a yeah. conflict over the transfer what? of consciousness from flesh to machines escalated into a war which has decimated a million worlds. That's all you get from him. Chat, chat, leaning right. uh, colony wars for sure. Somebody said right, somebody right. said G police, but that is not on the list, so that doesn't count. Yeah, anyway. I don't think Scott's pulling a fast one like E. You can't no. see it's hidden. No. Um. All right, so the chat says Colony Wars, uh, but it sounds like it's destroy destroying everything. But then again, when I think of colonies, I think of just you know one planet. Mm. But this could be a, a a larger colony, and I'm I'm just dragging on forever. So I'm just gonna say, is D total annihilation? Is it total annihilation? It is indeed. Nicely done. Yes. This game yes. came out in '97. It came out on PCs. It was a big deal. Everybody loved this game. You had to. Totally upgrade your PC to play it, or else you were screwed because it was a monster. <laughs> total upgrade for yeah, total big time. annihilation. And that game inspired all kinds of stuff later that, uh, you know, fed on it. But the idea of that game was like most strat R RTSs were like, well, you can only have so many units out at once, and you can yeah. you can have up to 100, but it can only be that. Like they had these limits. This game had no freaking limits. It's just like send yeah. a billion of these little Jeeps in there, no problem. Unless your computer can't yeah. freaking handle it, you know? Uh, <laughs> it reminded me, though, the way that VO worked at the top, it reminds me a lot of the guy from uh, Colony Wars, which is why I stuck that in there. Yeah. So. Late 90s audio was fan-freaking-tastic. Yeah. Some of the earlier 90s. 99, stuff. 97, 97 to 99, we had kind of caught up. We were doing okay by then, I think. Yeah. Brian, all right, well done. You did it. Let's see if I can do the same here for yours. What's my platform? What's my year? What's my stuff? 
The year is 1992, and you got your Super Nintendo Entertainment System yeah. out, and you're about to play one of these games. All right, 92. Audio, please. Here we go. Your choices are A, Soul Blazer. Yeah. B, Cybernator. Yeah. C, Space Megaforce. <laughs> D, Warp Speed. Oh my gosh. All these names sound so similar to all these. It's not like a bunch of generic bullshit names. Um, If you went to AI right now and said, make up some bullshit space names, space game names for me. This would be the list you Yeah, get. it's like a mobile game name generator. That's what you've made. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, this doesn't sound familiar at all, but I... No. For whatever I this, reason... I think I made this too hard. You might have made it yeah. a little hard, but I'm going to say I mean, that of I mean, all I mean, of I mean, these I mean, games, the one that it rings a bell the most is C. But let me just think for a second. Soul right. Blazer. Don't remember what that was. Cybernator, no memory of that. Warp Speed, do not remember that. Cyber Mega or Space Mega Force kind of rings a bell, and this sounds like me, sounds like a bunch of weird anime <laughs> characters going. All right, we're doing the Mega Force. Let's go to space. Like somebody just did their zipper up. Yeah, I'm done peeing. Let's go to space. X, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm gonna say it's I'm gonna say it's C, uh, Space Mega Force. Scott, give yourself. <laughs> Damn it. What is it? Oh, no. I didn't make this too hard, though. I was worried that I might make this too hard. It is B, Cybernator. I don't know what that is. Why do I not know that? I Hold don't on. know. But there was a glut of these games on the SNES during this time. Let me see. And maybe I... And I I just happened upon Cybernator because I thought it sounded pretty cool. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I started looking for other games that were like it. This thing... People love this game. It came out late in 1992. Let's see. Um, Konami? It, NC Soft did some development on it too, I believe. You remember those guys? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I know this with the mech that jumps. I played this once, wondering what yes. it was, but I didn't really know because I had never played it before. So it looks awesome. Yeah, yeah I want to cover this one day. This might be worth looking at more because I mean I don't know how popular it was. It doesn't sound like it was, but it uh, does. It must not have been. And there was so much competition in that space. Apparently, with Soul Blazer, Space Mega Force, Warp Speed, it was all kind of looked like this games. Except some of them were like bullet hell uh, type games. I need Sounded more. Like you know what I need more of? I need more mech shit in my life. Mech shit for real. The new Mech Warrior, yeah, right. uh, Mech Warrior Five Merc not Mercenaries uh, uh, Clan, is like a co-op new mm. thing they're doing. A uh, single player focused co-op right. thing. And I cannot wait for that because it just is mechs, and I'm I'm riding around in a mech. That, you know, look how freaking awesome this one is, though. This this thing we're talking about, Cybernator, with he's got his jetpack, he's got his. He, it's very much a bullet hell, but side scrolling, right? Yeah. I mean, he's still yeah, picking yeah. up all his little power ups and stuff. Looks just like a freaking Cybernator. You know, bullet hell uh, game. Let me see how this did review wise, because I I wonder it if it was just a, reviews. Did it? Um. Yeah, it did really. Oh, in Japan, use, but... it was called Assault Suits Valken. Oh, um, I like that name even better, actually. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, there's a, there a movie the previous year called Cybernator. Maybe we should do a, a double up. Maybe we should <laughs> do it. I don't think it was related to it, though. Yeah. I think it was just, yeah. Oh, here it is. Mostly positive reviews on release. Uh, Famitsu gave it a 32 yeah. out of 40, which is pretty high for them. Um, Let's see. Call it close to perfection from the graphics to the music and intense story. Considered it a possible candidate for game of the year that year. I need to check it out. There's more a, more than I did. Good, I looked I, at it, it, but, you know, I didn't do much. Yeah. It. A, a good indication of a game that has a story behind it is a pretty a long Wikipedia page. It's not huge, but it's pretty good. And yeah. there's a lot of articles and references talking about it. So there may be some story here. Yeah. Might be something there. I have to check it out. Uh, well done for you. Bad for me. I got one of these. That's okay, though, because now we have this. Welcome to the treasure room. We got a brand new patron who called in on the uh, hotline, 801-471-0462, and he says this about our pre-show. <laughs> Enjoy. Hi, this is Mike. I just signed up for a bunch of your shows. Um, this is specifically for uh, Play Retro, 
So yeah, it's the first week I've signed up for the per, the uh, the Kajigger there, where you get the the free show <laughs> separate, the bonus. Um, wasn't expecting as much child pornography talk. Um, <laughs> probably you want to play this if you do on the um, on the free show. You know, I don't want to throw that out there, but I love the show. You guys are awesome. I'm glad I signed up for everything because the bonus stuff is great. Uh, that's all I had. I just thought it was funny to be the first week uh, and uh, yeah. talking about all that. <laughs> Play retro. That's, yeah. that's right. Now remember. The, the, the Very important rare thing. for us to talk about. Well, child yeah, but the, the in any context. But hold on, yeah, that's the point. Is this right. was very specific <laughs> context of us being very condemning of the practice, and I don't even remember yes. the full context of why it came up. But this was not us going. So what's the deal with child pornography? It wasn't like that. Yeah. So what's what's all of this stuff I hear about the child pornography? Yeah, it was us going. <laughs> no, that stuff's horrible, <laughs> and people who do that are horrible. And we were talking about how horrible it was. So just for clarity, yeah. that's what our pre-show was about. It was a little bit random I, that I, day, you know. I think it started out as something maybe I'd seen on TV or so. I don't remember exactly what happened, but yeah, we was we were just you know just going going rounds. We went places. We went places. Are. But it is pretty yeah. funny. Your very yeah. first episode, and you <laughs> and hear this thing, right? You're like, what the frick is this? This is thought, pre-show. Yeah, <laughs> this is retro games. How is it a retro <laughs> game to talk about that? Weird. And what was anyway. your name again? I missed it. What was uh, it? Hi, this Mike? is Mike. I... Mike. Mike. Yeah. Very good. Thank, thank you, Mike. And thank you for being patient and also listening to the other pre-shows. So you know that's just not the content. Yeah. Right? Thank you, Mike. Today's was mm. way less of that. Today was about what would we do today? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember, I don't remember at all. This week. It was like an One hour ago. It might, be, it might be anything. It was about an hour ago and I don't remember. Anything. Whatever the hell it was. You guys yeah. remember what we talked about pre-show in the chat? Do you guys can you can yeah. you help me here? I don't, I don't remember. remember. Oh, we, I talked about sister cities. We talked about oh, sister cities. Oh, sister cities and where you grew up and all that. Parking lot and all that. It's okay. great. Yeah, it was a great yeah, talk. My parking lot, place I grew up, and uh and and what if you drop the first letter off the U the US states yeah. names and stuff? It was a lot of fun. Yep. This is all true. Our brains are on half mode today. Uh, all right. Well, there's that stuff. Fun stuff to be had. Let's dive into this real quick. Ludicrous kill. Hey, it's time to get a quick up, uh, up, up, up reel. Sorry, Unreal report. Uh, Unreal like 99 up, yeah. and Unreal tournament 2004. Uh, are we playing today? What are we, what are yeah. our plans today? Are we playing tonight? Um, that's entirely up to you. We haven't we haven't set anything solid down, but it's always it's always a possibility. It's always on the Friday table, right? Night. Yeah, it's always on the table. I think we're uh, good in there. UT ninety nine. We used to play on Monday night, six thirty p.m. Eastern time. Um, this week, not a lot of change in the top five, uh, other than me and Scott are out of the top five completely. We're now down to seven and eight. By the way, Jeez. I'm seven. Scott's eight. Suck it. Because I haven't played I haven't secrecy. played UT ninety nine in about a month. So it's my fault. It doesn't matter what your excuse is. You're still you're still lagging behind. I know. The sun was in my eyes. Secrecy <laughs> top is number one. Flap Jackson upright night at number three. Denier at four, and Surge at number five. And me and Scott down at seven and eight. Boo. Now on Friday nights we play the Unreal Tournament 2004. We've been really enjoying playing the Assault uh, mode on that. It's a lot of freaking fun. Yeah. Um, and Sick Recky number one there. Sick Recky uh, is really good, and sometimes you go. Sick a little too good, right? So the problem is Sick has got an amazing memory for maps. So if it is a map, uh, if it is a map, and this is where me and Scott lag behind the most and most of us because we've forgotten all the maps. Secrecy remembers all the freaking maps and can get there in a hurry, especially in assault mode. Number one. To say she two, is dominant in this game everyone. is an understatement ever made. Like, yes. Absolutely dominant in our games. That's unbelievable. Okay. map memory is so important yep. two is try to kill everyone three frog pants still in the top five brag flack and guess who's number five me oh Your look at friend, you Shock a effect. couple times down yeah. behind me hmm it's interesting okay. okay well anyway we're it's gonna okay. shoot some people in the face coming up so please play tonight with us that would be wonderful about an hour after retro we gib retro gib.com retro gib.com for all the details that is how correct to join, how to get it and all that good stuff that's right quick note next week we are hitting the wolverine of our lives that's right mm -hmm. the 8 bit the 16 bit the movie tie-ins all of it we're going to talk about are we going to do all of it Woo, scott's talking big baby dude wolverine for the 91 nes game was a right. big deal for me i like that game a lot the snes okay. game okay. and amantium sorry adam antium rage very good game. I have that one. My son yep. gave it to me for Christmas. 
Yep. The year before last. Uh, Wolverine's Rage X-Men from 2001 is a Game Boy Color game. Mm-hmm. Quite good. We're going to talk about all these Wolverine games. And the reason we're doing that is there's a lot of hype right now around the new Disney Plus series and bringing back X-Men 97 to the uh, to the world. And, uh, you know, big part of that is... Have you seen the... What? Have you seen the latest episode? No, I'm, I'm, I'm behind. the latest episode at this point. Um, the, f- the fourth episode, uh, spoiler... Uh, not bad spoilers, but this is say there's supposed to be some references to the uh, X Men arcade beat 'em up game, and I can't wait. What to to fall into that? Yeah, that's great. Can't wait to see. I didn't know that. I really liked. I've only seen the first, and I loved it. I got to catch up though. Well, no, I guess I've seen the first two because yeah. I watched them with you. Uh, so yeah, three and four are on my radar. Be watching that soon, and we're going to talk about Wolverine, the one X Men everyone seems to love the most. He's your big breakout star of the X Men, you know. There's a lot of good X-Men, but when you think of them, who do you think of? Well, you think of Wolverine. And uh, we're going to think of him fondly in the video game sense. So that's next week right here on Play Retro. I hope. In the meantime, please make sure. Yeah, I hope so too, bub, uh, with my cigar hanging out. Go to patreon.com slash play retro and be like (laughs) these brand new folks. Matt Stanley Webb, Jesse Freak Elite Summer. Yeah, Freak Elite. We know Freak Elite. Okay, Freak Elite. Uh, Jeff Rose yep. and Joe McNally, all of these fine folks, are brand new people over there that are now getting no commercials ever. They're getting pre-show content every week, even the weird stuff. Uh, they get it all, and there are people we love, and we'll love you too if you sign up today at patreon.com slash play retro. Our website is frogpants.com slash play retro, and that is it for us. Brian, is there anything else you'd like to say to these people before we cut them off? Yeah, uh, my my schedule streaming schedule returns to normal next week, so uh, check it out. Twitch.tv forward slash Brian Dunaway. Lots of times I play these games yeah. uh, online, so you can watch me play. So next week, if you want to watch me uh, make a fool of myself playing some Wolverine games, tune in. I want to see that. I want to see you make a fool of yourself no mm-hmm. matter what you're playing. Anyway, that'll do it for us. Between now and then, everybody go I'm play something time. retro, and we'll see you next time. Get more at frogpants.com. You are Mr. Potato Head. Yeah, you sure are. <laughs> I Mr. love it. Potato he, even, Head. he even does the... Uh...